Hello again, that's Ben with Studio on the Lake. So here's what we've got. This is for uh, all you knuckleheads out there that have been carving Halloween pumpkins. It, it's time to move on and do something else. So here's a fun little uh, vampire bat. So the rest of you out there uh, get to go and do something, a bat. Uh, yeah, pumpkin man, we already did that. Hey, uh, here's a little quick uh, deal in there. That, my friends, is a basswood tree, or several basswood trees, seven to be exact. This is the last one that I'm picking up. And uh, there's the old steel chainsaw on the side. And there's another section of it. So far, this is about a week ago, two weeks ago. That's all I managed to get. And uh, that's where this basswood comes from. And I'll take that and split it, etc. So here we're gonna, I, I just kinda drew out a, I thought, vampire bat, a piece of nasty basswood. And uh, if you look there in the upper right hand corner, the thing that's most dangerous right there, that's not the most dangerous thing that I'm putting on there. That's that thing that hanging out of my mouth there. So it's got a rubber pad on it. It's a standard DeWalt grinder. That's a 24 grit. And uh, that's the piece that I use on there. This one, for some reason, was warped. You feel bad breaking the epoxy on it down, but uh, it, it will uh, mellow itself out. That's kind of my go-to tool there. And that's that famous DeWalt setup for you. Notice the blue electrical tape. So I'm just gonna shape it down. I, I didn't know, I had no idea. I, I, unfortunately, didn't have a reference. And you'll, you'll see how that will come back and bite you later on. Uh, and I'll explain when we get to that point why I should have probably started with a reference, looked at one. I kind of thought I had an idea what a bat was supposed to look like. Uh, if nothing else, cartoon bat. This was not going to be a real bat. And most of the wood carvings and whatnot are a lot more fun if you character them than they are if you build them uh, true to life form. So there's, there's two, I, I wanted exaggerated uh, fangs in the front on this character that's the two little things you see in red there and I, I he figured he kind of had a worm big head smaller body so for lack of reference I'm thinking here that's a an eyeball I, I wanted to start out initially with the huge huge monster eyes so what I'm outlining here is a, an eyeball this guy, like the pumpkin uh, man, is of absolutely no use whatsoever. I, I do have a couple of real pumpkins that I, I plan on, on doing some carving on there. I got some, some uh, interesting stuff that we used to do years ago when the kids were little. So that might be fun. Uh, it'd probably be a week or two before I, probably two weeks before I get those in there. So I'm outlining the fangs, put the nose in there, just a little button nose. I want the fangs to stick out over the mouth, come out of kind of the upper lip. That's what I'm thinking right now. And then a big old huge cartoony character mouth on there. So that's the mouth cutting it underneath the fangs because they come out kind of on the, over the upper lip. That is a cuts all bit. If you want to save 5%, use the code that's down there in the description save you five percent on on what you get or what you pay for though on those things and it, it sends a little bit of money to the channel also filmed it per my standard you're not going to get a whole lot of a lesson out of this one one of these days I'll, I'll quit screwing around with with these silly things and uh, and actually put a, a good lesson video together and in that case, I won't run it three times through. Uh, this one's going to be ran just like the normal. I'll give you 10, 15, 30 seconds, maybe some sequences, uh, a little longer than that uh, at regular speed. And then uh, 
then I'll zap it to uh, three times where you'll get to see the majority of uh, what I'm doing. Not all of it, of course, because we added some of that out. I do shoot on a really wide angle. Uh, this whole frame has got probably my head, chest, uh, and whatnot, and then the camera has a good resolution, so I'm able to zoom that down in the editing program that I use. I use DaVinci uh, as an editor. And that, once again, that's a cuts all bit. That's my blue hand piece from the Ultima Carver from uh, PGL Enterprises over in uh, Minnesota. It's kind of a lesser known, but it's been around for years. It's run by uh, one character. Uh, as far as I know, he's the guy, only guy I've ever talked to over the years. So I got the head roughed out. You're kind of looking at a worm body there. I, I guess later on, thinking about this, you start thinking about it as you're editing. Uh, a bat is really just a, a flying mouse. It's a rodent-looking character with a funny-looking head. So this guy's kind of zombied out, and I like it. What's a bat without bat wings? So there's a piece of basswood. Uh, not one of the better pieces, but uh, a piece that looked like you could get a wing out of. So once again, I'm uh, winging it. <laughs> this, this, you're doing a bat wing. You'll, you'll see here, I, I, I make a mistake on this too. And I don't know, I'll mention it, go ahead and mention it now because you probably won't notice it when we go on. For some reason I was thinking that his, his hands on his wings, he, the, the bat's hands are attached to the wings. And for some reason, I was thinking that that would be on the bottom right there where I'm scribbling in, and that would be the hand. And in reality, that's not really where they're at. They're up there on the top at, uh, say, 2 o'clock position. But I went ahead and, and drew this out, book matched it. If For those of you that understand that sort of thing, I split it right down the middle, so I got a left and a right wing. And I got the trusty uh, DeWalt out and... Uh, removed a bunch of stuff and at the same time I, I, I kind of I left those a little bit thick so that I could concave the center of those if you uh, are a subscriber or you've been or you've been back through and you've seen uh, a couple of the dragons that are done the dragon wings are done the same way the fairy wings are done the same way in wood or most of them some of them are done with canvas but uh, this one just has to be done with wood You can see this this makes quick work of it you could lay this down on a bench with a stop block in front of you and a chisel and, and do it fairly quickly probably not as quick as this but you certainly could do it quicker or you can do it with a knife so that's going to go on there like so and we got one more wing to go see that i drew a hand on the bottom of it i got to looking at it later on i thought that looks wonky so i actually looked up a bat pull the bat down, reference down, and that's not where their hands are, or arms, whatever you want to call them, the front legs, they're actually on the top. So at some point in here, and I wasn't paying attention where that happens, but those get cut off. Again, no idea uh, if this was correct or not when I was doing this. I, I put four or three deals in the middle there and they come down and then the that one comes down on that hand and this is where it started looking kind of wonky to me and I was thinking man I don't know if that's right or not so once again cuts all bit these are the gold ones if you've looked at Jordy's stuff Gordy has a gold gold one in there uh, I would have sh shown you some of these I, I've still got the editing to do on the cheap Chinese uh, carver that I bought for $80 and it when I bought it I went ahead and purchased some new cuts all bits and I, I had them actually in the case filmed them showed you what they were and about four hours worth of filming and then I took and threw the cases away and started using the bits and, and now you you can't tell one from the other the gold doesn't show up uh, on those so I think this is one of the newer cuts all bits I, I use the bits until they die, obviously, or I wreck them. If you were to drop that handpiece, uh, 
and it hits the floor sometimes that's just enough if it hits on the tip to bend that enough that it's out of out of balance and you can feel it in your hand and at that point I quit using them because it's bad on the look at that there's no there's no hand there I took it off and I, I didn't make provisions for the hand at the top so uh, in um, epoxy I go ahead and uh, sculpture uh, quick wood that's it I'm having trouble remembering what it was in the quick wood I go ahead and sculpture uh, two hands and, and stick them up on the top there and I, I don't think I filmed that you'll just see those magically appear so I'm, I'm uh, rabbiting in the back and I'm just going to attach uh, this guy not with the epoxy but he'll get attached with uh, uh, super glue And there, there's something that used to be around, I'm sure it's still around somewhere, but if some of you that have been doing some of this stuff for a while or playing around with crafts, they used to make a super glue that had a hot shot accelerator on it. So you, you'd put this glue on there, stick the piece on, take this spritz spray, and then you'd shoot it, and uh, it would be instantaneously uh, dry and ready to hold. I haven't really looked real hard for it, but... Uh, it's not with the rest of them, I'll tell you that, the accelerator, which would be nice because you wouldn't have to sit there and hold this thing because uh, 20 seconds is not really 20 seconds when they say it'll, it'll dry because five minutes later you're still getting super glue on your fingers. So there's some of that uh, uh, quick wood. It's a two-part epoxy. If you've watched any of the channel, you've seen me use it before, you need it up there for a couple of minutes. You can't see it in the, yeah you can, if you look upper left hand wing there, right right at the, about the one o'clock position, I, I was too thin in the corner and I poked a hole through it. So rather than recarve another wing, because this thing's uh, silly and has no use whatsoever, I'm going to patch that wing and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some of that quick wood uh, on the back of the wings where they where I've got a little bit poorer fitting job on the back and I don't I don't recall this thing was about this was a pretty quick carve probably an hour long there's that hole I poked it through feathered it out I, I just got too thin on there and it, that won't show because it'll be uh, painted When I paint, I use just Josonia. I've said that before, and I use them as a series of washes. So here's something new, other than that Mastiff in the background. You can see him peeking in the studio there. He comes in and steals stuff. He steals a piece of wood, and then he takes it out in the yard because he doesn't like the tool no or the grinding noises, and either lays on the porch or uh, lays in the front yard. So here's a piece of uh, standard tin. I use it quite a bit for various different things. You can shape it, do all kinds of neat things. I use it on fish if I'm making uh, fish decoys or if I'm making fishing lures. Uh, so some of my other carvings, like a, a lot of times I'll do a peacock and then use a big piece of tin and fan it out. Uh, I also use tin on uh, birdhouses for the roof. And for that, I don't have any laying out there now or I would have used it, but uh, typically I'll take a three or four foot section of it and uh, put an acid etch on it and then throw it outside. And in three or four months, it's just all rusty and uh, as, as rustic as you like. So you see, you can shape this stuff. It's just like auto body work. You get the right pliers and the right tools. So there's a foot. I was too lazy to, to make a foot. And I thought this would be kind of fun to show you how this is done. So, and then I put two little antenna on there, and uh, voila, look at that, someone put hands on this character. I don't know why the antennas were there, I just thought they were supposed to be there, and when the, uh, at least my imagination had it that way. And then uh, I put an eyelet screw in the back of his head there, and I, I move it around a little bit, but I kind of wanted him to hang, you can hang him from a, a thread. So he's, you can't see it there, he's got his tongue sticking out to one side underneath there and that'll get painted red and he's got the fangs, both his feet and at this point I thought he looked pretty good and all he needed was the, the, the finish work and the, just a little bit of detail work. Uh, 
I'll show you when I painted him. So in the background there, he's laying there, he's got one coat of paint on him, and I was looking at him, and I thought, this guy doesn't look right. There's something wrong with him. Looked up again, a picture of a vampire bat. He's not even close. Uh, if you were uh, studied bats for a living, you would, you would roll over in your grave trying to think that this was a bat. Of course, it is a character, but he was missing ears. And of course, I didn't leave space. I didn't leave a block of wood on the top there, a piece of wood on the top for his ears. So here again, a little bit. Uh, you saw I put that down on a. I cut it out, and then I uh, I did some body work on it shaped it out in the middle and I, I didn't spend a whole lot of time I left those kind of rough and poof glued them in his head so that's the end of that you knuckleheads get out there and carve uh, carve some bats or something else here he is in in front of one of the big pumpkins I plan on carving one of these days and he is absolutely no good but he does have a good heart as you can see so voila there you go Halloween vampire bat hey thanks a lot this has been Ben with Studio on the Lake